Hi everyone and welcome to this game day edition of The Crows Show brought to you by Foodland. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. Yes, we are counting down to the club's first game at the new Perth Stadium against Fremantle. Yes, indeed. It certainly appears a fantastic venue and we'll have a closer look a little later. Also ahead, the defender who only gets the best. But first, routine dictates the game day activities of most players. They like to be relaxed and stress free. In past seasons, we've seen what Sam Jacobs and Josh Jenkins do to prepare. This time, we tag along with David McKay, who has to divide his time between football and fatherhood. Hey guys, welcome to my place. Uh, we've got the big game this afternoon against the GWS Giants, so I thought I'd uh, give you a bit of an insight into what we do before a game in terms of preparation, uh, so come on in. Food is a really important part of our preparation, um, making sure that we eat the right food at the right time. Um, so for myself, I'd like to eat three hours um, before the first bounce. With a 4-10 game, I'll have a lunch that is a salad chicken roll, and then I have this uh, little concoction too, um, which I have before every game, um, which is a bit of last night's leftover pasta, and also uh, a little bit of brown rice and quinoa, which is a bit of a combination mixture that I've developed over time. It's time to pack the bag for the game. Um, so a few key things need to include, obviously runners, um, really important for the warm up. Socks here and bathers, so I like to wear bathers under my shorts um, for every game. Um, lucky bathers, you might say. Boots, obviously, really important, so put them in and uh, can't go anywhere without the water bottle either. Most of our stuff, like our jumper and shorts and that sort of thing, warm up top, they're already at the ground waiting for us, so the club do a good job of making sure they're clean and, and ready to go for when we arrive at the ground. With uh, a late afternoon game or a night game, um, it gives me a lot of time to hang out with um, the little ones. So this is Lucy, she's uh, a couple months old and she's just woken up, haven't you? My little boy Will, who's one and a half, he's, he's still sound asleep. He'll wake up in time for the footy and he'll come along and, and have a run around in the rooms afterwards, he loves that. We're just uh, on our way to the ground now, um, have a bit, little bit of a drive in and then uh, once I get to the ground I, I like to keep my routine pretty similar every week so go for a wander out in the ground, get a feel for the conditions and then it's into getting strapped, um, some physio treatment, mobility and stretching and slow build up um, to the first bounce and, and uh, get amped up to go for that. In my day, Tony Modra got changed two hours before the game and then went around annoying the other players. Well, it seemed to work for him. When you hold down the key defensive position, you expect to come up against the best forwards in the game. And that's the challenge Daniel Talia faces every week. And I tell you what, he rarely lets the team down. The likes of Franklin, Kennedy and Revolt can testify to his effectiveness over eight years. Thanks to Revolution Roofing, let's get to know Tales a little more. Although we're not probably getting the wins that we want, you know, six and five is not the spot we probably wanted to be at the start of the year. I think there's some real upside, you know, we've had a lot of injuries and a number of young guys come in and I feel like I'm leading down back and, and really keeping that consistent back six or seven. That's probably the one part of the team that's been pretty consistent. Measures the kick, revolt the target, good mark on spot. Watching on from the stands, Talia was watching on moments, going back out onto the ground and being effective. Oh, there's been some tough matchups to the start of the year, you know, um, I think Rewalt early, um, Franklin obviously at the SCG, um, some really good forwards coming up as well, you know, Josh Kennedy will be after the bye, um, Rewalt again and then Hawkins, so <laughs> there's three weeks there, but um, some really good players in the AFL, you know, for, you know, Tom Lynch from the Gold Coast as well, so a lot of dominant forwards that can, can really um, cut you apart and you've got to be on your game each week. Down the line, Hardigan, well done Rewalt, oh, beautiful hands from Talia. It's quite fascinating playing at fullback, you know, it throws up a bit of everything and, and there's some really good players and you've got to be able to, you know, change the way you play. You know, I know what my strengths are and then the way I beat blokes and, and these guys we're talking about I've played on for four, five, six years now so I've got a pretty good idea about how they play and, um, you know, you play the same team a couple of times and, and you get to know the way they move the ball and, and what your opponent's trying to do to beat you. Not a great kick and a very, very good mark. They're not 
easy to take like that going back. And Duday, who's had a really good game of footy, another big moment for him. Tom Duday has been sensational this year. You know, I didn't think he was going to come on as quick as he has, and to come in your debut year, and you know, he's probably averaging 20 possessions and five intercept marks a game, and and that's unheard of. So, um, I really thought we were going to miss, um, you know, a couple of guys that we lost last year, and for Tom to come in and play that role, that intercepting role is really important for the way we play down in that back six or seven and he's often the one dropping off his man and, and chopping it off. Yes, over the years, Daniel rarely concedes much more than a goal a game. Now, as we've seen this week, nothing stirs interstate rivalry like State of Origin Rugby League. The fierce competition between New South Wales and Queensland arouses enormous passion and pride, something that's probably missing from the AFL. Ever since the last interstate football clash in 1999, officials have resisted calls to reinstate the showcase games. Mark, you've played for South Australia. Would you like to see these games back? Yeah, look, I'd love to see them come back in some form, but what form that is, I just don't know. Uh, the passion, the uh, the rivalry between states has been fierce and, and also the, uh, the union, everyone coming together, you know, Port and Crows fans, for example, coming and getting behind a South Australian team would be great but just not sure how it happens. What did you most like about them? Uh, certainly it's the best against the best so the opportunity to try and prove yourself against the best opposition and then there for me uh, I grew up you know watching a Stephen Kernahan for example kick 10 goals in a state game and then to get the opportunity to play with him in a game like that is just outstanding so um, you know fierce rivalry generally from every Saturday but then you get a chance to come together and be teammates. You talk about uh, playing with some of your heroes. What are some of your other fondest memories? Um, there was a great game in 1993 where South Australia beat Victoria on the MCG and it hadn't been done for about 30 years. The last team that did it were, were called the Invincible. So we had a great win. Darren Jarman was just outstanding. Kicked six magnificent goals and yeah, something that uh, I'll certainly cherish. Off the top, you talked about some potential hurdles in terms of format. If they were to come back, how would it work? Yeah, that's a good question, Alana. I think everyone's been grappling with it, but for me it's probably got to be Victoria versus the rest because predominantly now there are so many Victorian players that come out of the under 18 so that is one format. The other one of course which works in America is an all-star game so whether it's East versus West or North v South or something like that somehow where the, the talent is distributed evenly and you just get to see the best play against the best. Yeah it's a debate that continues hopefully uh, a resolution can be found for everyone's sake. Mm. Thanks Mark and later in the show we'll ask the fans what they think about the concept. We'll stay with us after the break meet one of the most passionate players to ever wear the Crows Guernsey. Welcome back. The AFLW trade and sign period closed on Monday and the Crows were delighted to re-sign co-captain Chelsea Randall. She's played football ever since she was a young girl and 17 years later she inspires teammates with her spirit and commitment. The reigning club champion devotes herself to promoting the women's game. Inside 50 McWilliams from behind but how about that courage from the co-captain. Incredibly excited to be uh, re-signed with the Adelaide Crows for 2019 and uh, thrilled to be a part of the gang again. So the Crows Cup Carnival is basically uh, a one-day carnival for girls, basically to encourage them to, you know, have a uh, play, have a go at playing footy in a safe and fun environment. In my community programs role, we started that last year, and we had six carnivals um, across uh, South Australia running. Um, and this year, we've actually got uh, 23. Be out there at the carnivals on the day, and girls coming up to you, and I'm like, "Are you having fun?" And they're like, "Yeah, I love it." I want to play footy forever and so it's, it's just really great when you hear some of those messages and some of those stories from these girls and even from the teachers and saying this is just such a magnificent day. Great courage Chelsea Randall, well that's inspiration from the skipper. Well I never had a role model growing up um, in terms of a, of a female a AFL player so I guess I put myself in their shoes it's actually really cool that you've got over 200 AFLW players across the country um, that are playing this amazing sport. 
sport and you're seeing them on TV and um, you're seeing them in real life when they're at these Crows Cup carnivals and coming up and having photos and get to meet them and chat to them. Well, Chelsea is a dual All-Australian and last season won the club's best and fairest. Now, the Crows have more than 15,000 junior members who enjoy a host of benefits. A few of them even get to chat with Brodie Smith, all thanks to Thomas Farms. Welcome to Thomas Farms Junior Jams. This week, we've got Leroy. Welcome, mate. Thank you. Can you tell me how old you are, if you play footy, and who's your favourite player? I'm nine and I play footy for the Henley Sharks. And my favourite player is Hugh Greenwood. Hugh Greenwood? Yeah. The Sharks, did you like the whole key last week? Yeah. <laughs> if you could take any animal from the zoo, what would it be and how would you do it? Probably a lizard. <laughs> Luring it with its food. <laughs> yep, smart. If you could change one thing about school, what would it be? No homework. <laughs> if you could spend a million dollars, what would you spend it on? A Lamborghini. A Lamborghini? If you were invisible for a day, what would you do? Probably steal ice cream. <laughs> if you could take one spot on the Crows team this week, what spot would you take? Midfield. Midfield? So, and who would you kick out of the midfield? I'm not sure. Go on, give me one. Mm. Rat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thanks for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> From the Congo to the Crows, it's been an incredible journey for the club's newest employee. Cecile Saidi was only three months old when her family fled the war-torn Republic of Congo in 1996. They spent eight years in a refugee camp before finding a new home in Australia. Thirteen years later, she's the Crows' new multicultural liaison officer. Only a few weeks ago, these girls had barely heard of football, let alone played it. The 12 students who attend Theberton Senior College are from a range of multicultural backgrounds and already half of them have joined a team. Sport in general is a great vehicle to, you know, bring people together. Um, and, and footy being, you know, the number one sport in, in Australia and being at the very core of the Australian culture, it's, it's very important that new arrivals and, and the multicultural communities get this, themselves involved. And that's where Cecile comes in. She's still learning the game herself, but is excited by her role with the club. So going out to communities, um, events and um, helping um, particularly children and, you know, um, teenagers learn. When Cecile's family escaped the Congo for a refugee camp in neighbouring Tanzania, their only thought was survival. After eight years in the camp, we came up to Australia um, with no English whatsoever um, and learnt the, uh, the language and, and I suppose the culture of Australia and um, that's got me here. 26-year-old Halima is from Afghanistan and when the Crows' Chelsea Randall visited her college, she immediately embraced the game. It's very enjoyable for me. It's a it's good opportunity for me that they come and <laughs> show us how to play and the skills and everything. Yeah, it's very good. She joined the Lutheran women's team and now plays every Sunday. It was very new for us. We are a new team and the others, they had experience from last year and... We will learn. Cecile has yet to join a club, but she has had a go. Before playing a footy game, I thought, as you know, most um, of our communities would think, it's a very violent game, you know, especially when you see people tackling and all. So I was, I was a bit reluctant to join, but then when I joined, it was actually really fun. Um, especially tackling, I enjoy tackling. With her warmth and enthusiasm, Cecile is bound to enlist a lot more players. Still to come, meet one of the AFL's true superstars and commentary that's up close.
Fremantle captain Nat Fife is ranked by his peers as the third best player in the AFL behind Dustin Martin and Patrick Dangerfield. His elite skills include flying high for a big grab. Already he's chalked up some beauties, but he does have a favourite as he explains in this high fire segment brought to you by Flight Centre. Love taking a hang. I mean, sometimes the big marks go unnoticed because I tend to land on my feet and carry on play quickly. But the one that stands out was round 11, 2015 against Richmond. I managed to get up on a smallish midfielder. That's plenty of hang time. Five for the big fly. High fives all round. When I was younger, get the brother out there, get the sister out there, try and take as many scrammers as I could. I practice at the training, I still do. New kids are great. Brayshaw, Chera, Mitch Croden, uh, Steph Giro, little man. They beat me on transition, all four of them, but it's nice to be able to sit on heads when you can. I, over the top with a beauty! The Moorcroft mark is probably the all-time greatest mark of all time. Try and reenact that as often as possible. But just for sheer epicness, the Matthew Lloyd rig comes from deep, jumps into a pack and just takes a beautiful clean grab, knee up. That's the sort of mark that you want to have a picture of framed at your house. That is a spectacular grab. I get frustrated when I sit and watch games on TV and players elect to go the body instead of taking mark of the year. Oh, five giving to one of the great marks. We're all here to entertain. Barrels, screamers, anything you can do to entertain is good. Five! Oh! <laughs> do you trust he's going to do that? Statistics show Fife's form this year is even better than when he won the Brownlow medal in 2015. Now, in the first half of this season, we've heard a lot about Perth's new stadium. Big crowds, great facilities and an excellent playing surface. In a few hours, the Crows will experience the ground for the first time when they take on Fremantle. Both the Dockers and West Coast are intent on making the stadium a fortress, so Adelaide will be determined to chalk up an early win. I'm sure many fans would envy the life of an AFL commentator. They get paid to travel around the country watching sport. But it's a little less glamorous for the boundary riders. Those who don't have the comforts of the commentary box but are outside with the players, rain, hail or shine. Triple M's Andrew Hayes is one of them. It's good as well to see the old school methods coaching from the ground in that quarter, which is a little bit stressful for the players, especially if you do something bad and you get, you get uh, dragged and you have to face a coach face to face. Uh, basically, my role is to be the eyes for the boys away from the ball. So you've got the blokes upstairs, the main guys. I'm down here next to the benches, so obviously I keep a, a keen eye on the benches, what's going on there. I'm, I'm looking for things like injuries, um, what's going on off the ball, the things they're not looking at, if there's you know, a bit of push and shove, if there's someone's clutching at a hand me that kind of stuff and I can report it back to these guys and basically just be their eyes for everything that's not quite as important from what they're doing. I was just watching uh, journeyman Sam Reed from the Giants get a fair bit of work done into his groin so hopefully he's okay. It is definitely rain, hail or shine. I haven't experienced the hail game yet, thank goodness, but a few weeks ago against the Dogs on a Friday night it was absolutely bucketing down but it's good fun, it's part of the game and uh, it just adds to the atmosphere. This is the first game I've done since then and it stays like this, you just go, this is a pretty good job. When Alana returns after the break, fans have their say about state of origin football. Returning now to State of Origin, and in 1989, a record crowd of 92,000 filled the MCG to see South Australia take on the Big V. We know the AFL doesn't see a place for these big games anytime soon, but do the fans. I think we should keep it going. Yeah, it's good, and the uh, tops are uh, fantastic. Oh, I'd love to see State of Origin, mate. It'd be fantastic. Got good memories of it at Footy Park, so yeah, it'd be good fun. I think we should leave it the way it is. Oh, I'll leave it as it is, I think, yeah. I reckon bring it back. I don't know when to put it. That's probably the hardest thing in the schedule. And, you know, if they could bring it back and have it, the, yeah, it's not going to affect the players and their off-season and everything else, it'd be worthwhile seeing. OK, let's stay with the fans and look for our face in the crowd. I think you look like a winner. 
If you recognise yourself, contact the club by 5pm on Wednesday. Be ready with some photo ID and you'll receive a merchandise pack courtesy of Toyota. As we wrap up today's show brought to you by Foodland, make sure you join us next week when we'll hear from Dynamo defender Rory Laird. Well, don't forget, for the latest news, visit the club website, afc.com.au, as well as social media. And, Mark, we have our own Twitter account yes. now, at The Crow Show. It's all very exciting. It certainly is. And just a reminder to stay on 7 for The Clash with the Dockers, which kicks off later this afternoon. Thanks for your company. We certainly hope you enjoyed the show. And we look forward to joining you again next Sunday at 11.30. We'll see you then. Bye for now.